Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna discuss why your conditioning sucks and how to fix it fast. Because maybe you crush your workouts, but the moment you hit real game intensity, your conditioning fails you. You gas out, you lose your edge, and you start making sloppy mistakes. So why does your conditioning suck? And more importantly, what can you actually do to fix it fast? Because chances are you're a trainer, coach or an athlete and you already know a lot about how to get strong but what you might not know as much about is the science and the protocols for developing elite conditioning in this video i'm breaking down five scientifically backed conditioning protocols straight from joel jameson's ultimate mma conditioning book these are the exact protocols that the best athletes and coaches in the world are using to develop elite conditioning for soccer basketball rugby wrestling mma and more and the five methods are each different with unique benefits. Stick around to the end so that way you know about each of the five methods and which ones are best for you. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, I wanna start with what conditioning actually means. And in reality, conditioning is energy system development. But wait, what does energy system really mean? Well, conditioning is all about how efficiently your body can produce and sustain energy for movement. Every physical effort, whether it's sprinting down the court, wrestling for a rebound, or maintaining defensive pressure, relies on different energy systems that fuel your muscles. If we compare a well-conditioned basketball player to a less conditioned basketball player, the difference becomes clear. In the fourth quarter, a well-conditioned player can still explode off the dribble, contest shots, and make smart decisions because their body can efficiently regenerate and resupply energy. They recover faster between plays, maintain their speed and power, and they don't let their fatigue dictate their performance. This allows them to remain in flow state and play at their peak performance. On the other hand, a player with poor conditioning starts to slow down, their reaction time suffers, they struggle to keep up on defense, and their jump shot starts falling short. Not because they lost skill, but because the energy systems are failing to keep up with the demands of the game. So if you wanna outlast, outwork, outperform your competition, then you need to train the right energy systems for your sport. And that means understanding how they work and how to develop them efficiently. That's why we're breaking conditioning down by specific energy system and giving you training protocols that actually work with the right amount of intensity, volume, and rest. So let's lay the groundwork by explaining the three primary energy systems and what's important to know about each. First is your ATP PC system. This is your energy system for short explosive power. It provides immediate energy for short bursts of high intensity efforts lasting less than 10 seconds. Movements like sprinting, max effort jumps, and heavy lifts use your ATP PC system. And you may also hear the system called the phosphocreatine system. Overall, it's just important to know that this is the energy system that gives you that fast energy, but it also runs out quickly and it takes time to recover. The protocols that we cover next with short, high intensity sprints or jumps with long rest periods will specifically train this system. The second energy system that you should know about is the glycolytic system. And again, there's multiple names for these systems depending on which book you're reading. You may also hear this called the lactic system or the anaerobic system. This one is important because it provides energy for high intensity efforts lasting between 10 seconds and approximately 90 seconds. When this system is overloaded, you end up with lactate accumulation and fatigue. To train this system, you'll need to use conditioning protocols that provide interval-based conditioning with moderate length and high intensity efforts followed by adequate but not full rest. And then the last energy system that you need to know about is the aerobic system. The aerobic or oxidative system is for endurance and recovery. This system fuels lower intensity efforts and helps you recover between intense efforts. Maintaining your position in soccer, recovering between plays in basketball or football, or even recovering between rounds in MMA requires the aerobic system to be well conditioned. Although this system doesn't produce rapid bursts of energy, it is crucial for long-term performance. The training protocols that we cover with steady state cardio at a lower intensity will specifically improve the aerobic system. Okay, now that we know the energy systems, let's get into the top five conditioning protocols, starting with method number one, cardiac power intervals. This method involves 60 to 120 seconds maximal efforts with two to five minutes rest between. Some specific drills that allow for maximum power output to be able to do this would include spin bike with resistance, a rower, incline sprints, sled push, 
a versa climber, or a stair climber. It's also possible to use this method with boxing, sparring, or tactical training with weighted vests or sandbags. So for example, you may do incline sprints for 60 seconds on with two minutes rest. But now you might be wondering, how many times should you do that? Well, that actually depends on your current fitness levels and it can range anywhere from four to 12 repetitions per session. So a new athlete may do incline sprints for 60 seconds on, two minutes rest for four times for a total of a 12 minute conditioning session. But a more well conditioned athlete may do two minutes on, four minutes rest, 10 times for a total of a 60 minute conditioning session. One thing to note though for longer conditioning sessions like that is that I typically recommend using a mixed modality approach. Basically doing a few different exercises so that you don't, for example, pull your hamstring after doing an hour of repeated sprints. So for example, the first 20 minutes may be spin bike sprints, the next 20 minutes may be rower, and then the third 20 minutes may be sled pushes. As you can imagine, 60 minutes of conditioning like this is a tough conditioning session, but that is the kind of training that it takes to develop elite conditioning. So to summarize, method number one, cardiac power intervals with 60 to 120 second efforts, two to five minutes of rest, four to 12 reps per session, and this can be done around one to two times per week. Now let's move on to method number two, and that is zone two cardio. This involves training at a steady state with a heart rate approximately 60 to 70% of your maximum. I have a maximum heart rate of 190, so I target around 130 beats per minute for my zone two cardio sessions. Now, how long should a zone two cardio session be? Well, typically between 45 to 90 minutes plus. So for example, a 60 minute run targeting around 70% of your maximum heart rate. Some athletes like distance runners will do one exercise the whole time, just going out and running for 60 minutes or 90 minutes. However, MMA, tactical or wrestling athletes, I would recommend again using that multimodal approach. So for example, instead of going out and running for 60 minutes, doing 10 minutes each of running, jump rope, spin bike, rower, sandbag carry, and shadow boxing. Keeping each of the exercises though low intensity, targeting around that 70% of maximum heart rate. The science behind why that multimodal approach is beneficial is actually pretty interesting. It helps you develop efficiency with a wide variety of different movement patterns. And it also helps improve how your blood vessels efficiently deliver blood to the different muscles in your body. Okay, so now let's summarize method number two. Method number two was zone two cardio. This is performed around 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate for 45 to 90 plus minutes. This is typically performed two to five sessions per week and for the most part results are proportional to volume. That's why most endurance athletes at the highest level are training 20 plus hours per week with 80 or 90% of that being in zone two. That said, even one to two hours per week can be really beneficial for your cardiovascular health and for your conditioning. So you wanna find the amount of zone two training that works for you and your individual goals in life. Okay, now let's get into a tough one, but one that can be very beneficial, and that is method number three, threshold training. This involves training at a steady pace, similar to zone two, but at a higher heart rate, specifically near the lactate threshold. The lactate threshold can vary between individuals anywhere from approximately 70% to 90% max heart rate, depending on your fitness level. For the typical recreational athlete, it may be around 75 to 80% of max heart rate, but for highly trained endurance athletes, it may be up to 90% max heart rate. Now you would need a lactate measuring device to test this definitively, but you could estimate it by running at a pace where it becomes difficult to have a conversation. Okay, but what does a threshold session actually look like? Well, one example of a threshold session would include running for 10 minutes at 80% max heart rate, and that could be done two to five times with about one to three minutes of rest between efforts. So for example, 10 minutes on, two minutes rest, 10 minutes on, two minutes rest, repeated, two to five times depending on your level of fitness. This method is specific to improving your lactate threshold. This means building your ability to work at a higher intensity with less fatigue. So to perform method number three, threshold training, prioritize three to 10 minute efforts per rep, two to five reps per workout, and you can do this one to two times per week. 
Okay, next we're gonna cover a method that's completely different. It's really beneficial for athletes who wanna develop conditioning to be able to repeat max power outputs many times throughout a game. But before we get into that, I wanna take a quick second to thank our video sponsor, Wallaco. If you haven't yet made the switch from baggy shorts to compression shorts for training, what are you waiting for? With baggy shorts, you can't hold your phone in your pockets, you're constantly getting that thigh rub and chafing, and worst of all, no one can see your quad gains that you've been working on. Walco's distance half tight and sprint half tights solve those problems with a great fit, top of the line materials, and sweat proof side pockets. Whether you're going for a 90 minute zone two training session or training for cardiac power intervals with 60 second bike sprints, Wallaco shorts will help you stay locked in with your workout. Personally, I'm training for my upcoming races in the distance half tight in the short inseam, but you can check out their website and see what shorts look best for you. Thanks to Walco for sponsoring this video. If you wanna check them out, use the link in the description below and use code movement for 20% off. All right, now for method number four, alactic power intervals. This involves seven to 10 second efforts with two to five minutes of rest between sets. As an example, eight second incline sprints with three minutes of rest between efforts. And this can be done 10 to 12 times per workout. So for example, if you wanted to make this a 30 minute conditioning session, you could do five times eight second bike sprints with three minutes of rest in between and five times eight second incline sprints with three minutes of rest in between each. It's important to give true maximum effort here and then rest long enough that the heart rate drops below 120 beats per minute for the next effort to be truly maximal again. This is what makes this method effective is that true maximal intensity repeated 10 or 12 times. It's also important that the exercises you choose for this allow you to actually put out max power output. Some drills that allow for that max power output would include spin bike with resistance, a rower, incline sprint, a sled push with light to moderate load, a versa climber, or even weighted vest stair climbing. I wouldn't recommend strength exercises like lunges or barbell movements for this as they would cause more muscular effort without being as high of a conditioning stimulus. And also easy exercises like mountain climbers or burpees really wouldn't be challenging enough to max out for just 10 seconds. So make sure with this method you're actually using a challenging exercise that you can push really hard for 10 seconds. Overall, to do method number four, alactic power intervals, you want seven to 10 seconds per rep two to five minutes of rest between reps, 10 to 12 reps per workout, and this can be done anywhere from one to three times per week. One more good example of this would be getting a weighted vest and running up a set of stairs at the start of every three minutes, you know, at three minutes, six minutes, nine minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, resting for 10 minutes, and then doing it again. This would be a great way to build your ability to repeat that very high effort power output. And again, doing this type of conditioning is great for MMA athletes, basketball, football, or soccer players, or any athlete who wants to have the ability to repeat maximal power output many times throughout a game without dropping off their height or speed. This not only conditions your energy systems with upregulated enzymes, but it also helps your fast twitch muscle fibers repeat those high intensity efforts without loss of power. Okay, now finally we can move on to our last method and it's a really cool method that shouldn't work as well as it does, but it is the explosive repeat method. This method involves eight to 20 seconds of work per set with 30 to 60 seconds of rest in between sets. So for example, a 15 second weighted vest squat jump followed by 60 seconds of rest and then a 15 second weighted vest explosive push up, followed by 60 seconds of rest. And this could be repeated 10 times over. You'll notice that this method is slightly longer than the alactic power intervals with up to 20 seconds of work and also shorter rest. This helps you develop that fast heart rate drop response that MMA athletes are known for between rounds. The explosive repeat method is very challenging, but it can help you develop really great conditioning. Exercises that work well for this include squat jumps, split squat jumps, plyo push-ups, and other fast movements. So again, to perform the explosive repeat method, utilize eight to 20 seconds of work with 30 to 60 seconds of rest in between sets. Do this for six to 10 sets per series, and you could do up to two to six series per workout. And this is a method that you could use one to two times per week. So for another example conditioning session here with the explosive repeat method, you could do 15 seconds of squat jump with dumbbells or an empty barbell, 
rest for 45 seconds. 15 seconds of explosive step ups, rest for 45 seconds. Repeat that four times for a total of eight minutes of conditioning and then go rest for 10 minutes or do shooting drills or something like that to rest. And then you could repeat the whole thing either two times for a 40 minute workout or three times for a 60 minute conditioning session. As you can see, like any of these methods, you can scale down or up the volume based on your level of conditioning. Okay, so to recap, our five conditioning methods were number one, cardiac power intervals with one to two minute max efforts with two to five minutes of rest to push up your heart's capacity. Number two was zone two cardio with long duration steady state work at around 60 to 70% max heart rate to build endurance and recovery ability. Number three was threshold training, training near your lactate threshold for three to 10 minute efforts per rep to improve high intensity endurance. Number four was alactic power intervals with seven to 10 second explosive efforts with full recovery between to develop repeatable power. And then number five was the explosive repeat method, eight to 20 seconds of explosive work with short rest to improve fast recovery between bursts. Now you know the exact conditioning methods that athletes are using to develop top conditioning. It's up to you to decide which combination of methods will work best for you and your goals. I'm curious to know which one you're gonna try first, so let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe so I don't miss any future videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.